Hey, welcome back to Hoss Talks, everybody. This week, a special guest, uh, Mr. Rusher. Randall, how are you, man? Doing great, Hoss. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing so good. Um, thanks for taking time to kind of chit-chat with me. We've got some big news, some exciting news, and some stuff that you're working on. Uh, but first, I want to dive into Randall Rusher, the race car fan. You've been a fan for... Golly, ever since I've met you, you're like a fangirl about everybody almost. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, uh, racing's been a part of my life uh, as long as I can remember. So, you know, our family and I went, when we were young, we would go to the Tulsa Speedway every Saturday and go to Dewey on Fridays and go to Hutchinson on Saturdays for NCRA. And so, you know, the Donnie Crawfords, the Ray Crawfords, the Emmett Hans, that's who I grew up being a fanboy of. So, man, all the way back then. So, it's been a part of our life and a huge part of our life. So, you grew up in the, in the era whenever there was like that rivalry and like oh, the, the Han and the Crawfords and like definitely. just going after it. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Like, how would you compare that? Could, are there any rivalries like now in today's era? And it doesn't have to necessarily be like, just sprint cars or anything like that there's not like there's not like that true rivalry anymore there's really not you and i've discussed it before uh i think it adds to everything um on a race weekend but i can remember back then you know my brother and i were extremely close and still are to this day but i was an emmon hahn fan he was a ray crawford fan i was a dallas cowboy fan he was a st louis cardinals fan at the time so we were always polar opposites uh but you always had one that you cheered for and so um, whether it be the hero or the villain or the next weekend, it was vice versa. Um, you know, I think that adds to it. It's almost a WWE type mentality where, right. you know, you've got somebody. Um, I heard a line. Um, uh, I think it was Tony Stewart was telling Jeff Gordon that, you know, they were going around in the back of a, a car in the uh, beginning of the race and um, going around waving to the crowd. And, and uh, Jeff was talking about these people are all booing me. And he said, well, that's when you know you made it. They're either cheering for you or booing for you, but right. you're getting a reaction out of them one way yeah. or another. So um, I think that's kind of always how we take it. And I always like being the devil's advocate or on the other side, whether it be I'd be a Texas fan over an OU fan right. or be an Emmett Hahn fan over a Ray Crawford. But What made uh, you a fan of Emmett Hahn? Like, what about – I don't. I was think, it because your brother was a Ray Crawford fan? No, because he's younger than I was. And, and uh, I think I'm a little bit more at the time, a little bit more demonstrative about who my favorite was. And I think probably just because I chose Emmett at the time, I loved the number 52 – which now if I had to choose, I'd probably choose 55 over 52. But <laughs> at the time, I loved 52. I, I loved the car. I loved the John Think special car. I just everything about it, it just it just resonated for me. And that's, right. that's who I chose. And by no means is that who I only like now. You know, obviously, uh, uh, Donnie and, and the Crawford family is fantastic from top to bottom all the way around and Jake and everybody. And that's the thing I like about racing. It is a family. It is a giant family. And I think that's one of the things that no matter who you cheer for on a Saturday night, um, late Saturday night, you're a fan of everybody. Right. And you want nothing but the best from everybody. But yet you want to be super and ultra competitive. I mean, if, if we go out and count blades of grass right now, I want to win. I'm right. that competitive. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, uh, when you're a fan, you become a fan of everybody. And you, I like to, now I kind of cheer for the underdog more than, more than the favorite. So. Right. So throughout the years, you've been able to kind of go to a lot of different racetracks. You've met a lot of different racers. Um, you're, you're kind of just like the easy guy to talk to, you know. You're always uh, uh, willing to be open and, and just chit-chat with everybody. Throughout the years, what are some of your favorite racetracks that you've been to? Like your, your ultimate racetracks that if you were building a bucket list for somebody that you have to go to these races or racetracks. Right. Like what would be like, what would you consider maybe like your top five? Uh, obviously Knoxville just because of the Nationals. Uh, again, it's an atmosphere thing. It's uh uh, the whole town, it's an environment, and uh, you become a part of that. You get caught up in it, whether you're a, a sprint car fan or not. I really believe that if you're in that town, you you just fall right. in love with it. Uh, we love going to Peevely the weekend before for the Ironman. It's kind of a build-up to going to Knoxville. Um, Chili Bowl, of course. Um, you, you've, you've got to yeah. – you, you can't help but not fall in love with the Chili Bowl with everything that's involved. Um, but I think overall, for me, it's, it, it is about – the atmosphere and the people that's involved, not just so much the racers. I mean, I've been very blessed that growing up when I did, you become really close with Shane and Darren and, you know, Brady. And mm -hmm. so you, you can, um, you have a connection with them and you see them grow up and you see them evolve into, 
You know, I can remember when Shane was running a Rotax out at uh, Creek County. I mean, right. he was that big. Now yeah. he's only this big, but right. he was only th- <laughs> yeah. that big then, you know. But uh, And you have a connection with them. You feel like, hey, I grew up with them. I, I know what's going on, whether it be Christopher Bell or Daceland Persley or anybody that you cheer for because that's, t- that's your hometown guys. You right. saw them when they were five and six and seven and being lapped three times and dad screaming and pulling the infield. Yeah. And, but you, you see them go through the trials and the tribulation and become what they are. And so that's kind of one of the things that you really, you get a connection with. And, and that, that's what it is for me. It's not just about just the racing. It's the people that's involved. I, I try to explain to my wife, it's, you know, when we go to Knoxville, it's like a different family reunion. Mm-hmm. There's a different group that we meet there every year. And then the same with the Chili Bowl and same at Turn 5. You know, right. you, you have those connections with those people. And I think that's, that's what makes it last. Yeah, you love the racing and you love seeing the competition, but it's also the camaraderie on and off the track that draws me to it. You, you mentioned the Chili Bowl, and I, I remember my first time going to the Chili Bowl. Um, just amazing how much it's progressed since the first time I went. I can't even, probably like 10, 11 years ago. Um, do you remember your first Chili Bowl experience? I can't say I do remember the first. Um, there's sometimes I don't remember the last. <laughs> but uh, we always have such a good time, and, and, and that's one of the things that you know going in that, you know, it's a full week. I mean, even with me living in Bixby, uh, me and my friends, we get a room at the Embassy Suites just because I can be that much closer, get there right. that much earlier in the day, and you know you take it all in. And uh, so I don't really, I don't really recall any one per se, um, especially not the first one. But it's just an accumulation of all of them. Chili Bowl, you got? Aren't you part of the group that dresses up and does different costumes? Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little top bit. Row rowdy top row rowdy group. You yeah. guys get kind of kind of crazy, like sometimes. How, sometimes. how does? How how is that though? Because because of you guys being the top row rowdies, um, and being so vocal, right? Um, you kind of bring some attention to yourselves, and that kind of brings <laughs> um, along with it uh, kind of the the reputation, <laughs> and the drivers start it to does. get into it and it buy does. into it. And now you've had mm-hmm. NASCAR superstars making their trip. They're like, man, I have got to go to the top yeah. row rowdies. I've yeah. at least one night every week. You guys have some type of superstar up there. Um, What's that like being a part of that group that's kind of built that atmosphere? Now you have the bottom row boozers, and, you know, you guys kind of uh, haggle back and forth and and, and just have so much fun between everybody there. We love it because, again, it's, it's it's a give and take. It's fun, and you like to give everybody a little bit of stick, you know, whether it's Kyle or Rico or any of them coming up there. You'll hear our group, you know, we're... We're fanboys, but you're not obvious fanboys. You know what right. I mean? They're coming up, and we're screaming back marker and lap traffic. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, I think they eat that up. And I think, again, that's one of the things about racing that makes it so unique is, you know, you don't have these fans that are just just groping them when they come up. You know, we respect them, but right. also, you know, you respect who they are, but you want to respect their privacy. And they're just like the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, some of them just happen to be gassers where we're not. You right. know, but you respect them and love them for they do. And, it, and I think in return, they feel the same way about us. You know, yeah. I mean, I think we both need each other. Right. It's kind of one of those things where you know your boundaries and they know their boundaries. Sure, and sure. You just treat them like a normal dude, plain Without Jane. A and Without a doubt. And you got to give them a little bit of stick. Yeah, you, know what I mean? you, you got to. Got to give them some jabs here and there. Sure. Um, over the years, you've been involved with a lot of different people like drivers, um, teams. Um, your brother raced for a little while. Um, you guys help out a couple of different drivers here and there. You've been a part of different organizations that help different drivers and yep. and do different things. Um, and that kind of leads us to why, like, the main reason um, why we're meeting today. You're about to launch, or as this is going to air, it's launched. It's live now um, in the present tense. It's not, but whenever people are watching this, it's going to be live. Um, DirtCrowd.com yes, sir. Um, is kind of your... Your, your baby right now. It is. It is. Uh, it's something that we've been working on um, for probably closer to 18 months, maybe even two years. Um, back in uh, 2020 when they had what they called was Knoxville, um, not Knoxville but because of the uh, virus. But I sat down with Shane and Jen at that time, and we had a long conversation about it. And, and uh, actually, Shane was going to be our first driver that we launched with at Dirt Crowd. And... Uh, what Dirt Crowd is, is it's, uh, it's guys like us that are sitting around, whether it be at Turn 5 or whether it be at Dingus in Knoxville or it's up in the stands with the top of Rowdies um, shooting um, just jabs back and forth, and we're sitting there talking about racers and just racing in general. And 
uh, you know, how much your love for a driver and how much you can help a driver out. We, we all as fans would love to be able to sponsor everybody. Um, right. You know, in a perfect world, you could stroke a $10,000 check for everybody you liked. And that would be fantastic. But as we well know, racing, it doesn't matter at what level, whether it's outlaw carts or whether it's a world of outlaws. It's a very expensive sport. And in saying that, you know, as a fan, you want to try to help us when you can. Um, you know, you're trying to buy all your favorite drivers' merchandise and do what you can to help them out. And you feel like you have some skin in the game by doing that. And that's what we're trying to do with Dirt Crowd. Uh, Dirt Crowd was launched to uh, help promote drivers and, and help fans become subscribers or members, per se, um, for a, uh, a monthly fee. And there's obviously different levels. And with that, you get different feedback and different merch or exclusive merchandise from drivers and teams. But what we're trying to do is allow a fan to have a little bit of skin in the game. Uh, you know, if I go out on a Saturday night to Port City and I, I see a, a Garrett Benson or I see a Sean Mahaffey and I can't go down there in the pit area and, and stroke a $10,000 check, but why well, can sure give me $25 a month mm -hmm. and, and feel like I've got some skin in the game and help him. I mean, I can remember back, you know, you're, we're talking about Christopher Bell being in a junior sprint here and, and Shane and all these guys you've seen make their way up through. Well, we, there's always been a lot of guys behind the scenes that have helped out. Mm -hmm. And I think this uh, kind of makes a transition where it makes it easier for fans to say, hey, yeah, I do want to help uh, Jeffrey Newell, or I do want to help Aiden Parrish, or, you know, whoever it is. And I can do that by giving them $25 a month. And I might get some special merchandise. I may have a chance to win a signed visor or a signed helmet or a shop tour or a trailer tour, whatever that case is. But um, and not only saying that, really what we're trying to do is help these younger kids build their brand, um, know how important it is to uh, make that connection uh, with sponsors and partners and fans. And, and uh, you know, you've heard it said a million times. Janky just said it the other day on, on his uh, host talks. Um, but you never know who's in that pit area. And there are so many people that want to help and want to assist um, but don't really have uh, a way to go about it or don't really know how to go about it. You know, even uh, we've got Rico um, as one of our headline drivers that uh, he's going to launch on Friday. Um, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Yeah, he if I'm a if I'm a world outlaw fan or a Rico fan being in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I don't get to see him that often. I'm going to have to travel to get to him. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got to you know, I've got to go online to get merchandise or whatever. So we're trying to bridge that gap. Um, not only at the top end with the World of Outlaws and the USAC and the All-Stars and, and all these hitters, but also the grassroots starting levels, whether it be outlaw carts, micros, junior sprints, that is where I really feel like uh, Dirt Crowd can become a major asset for drivers and teams, and that's what we want to be. Right. Um, you know, we want to help bridge that gap and, and be able to let them talk to Rico, whether it's a Zoom call or whatever, and get drivers together at Turn 5 and have what we call a lunch and learn, where we discuss what Dirt Crowd is and, and bring in 40 drivers and say, look, this is what we're trying to do. This is the path. We've talked to guys. We've got guys that are drivers with Dirt Crowd right. that have went through this. You know, you don't want to just carry around a helmet bag and your shocks all the time and be told on Monday, hey, you're out of a ride. Yeah, you know, unbolt gotta, your seat, you're gone. Yeah, because it happens all the time. But if you can learn to build your team, a Brian Brown, a Rico Abreu, where, hey, I'm going to make this my team. So on Monday, I know I've got a job. I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about pulling out a seat. Because they bridge that gap. They make those connections with partners and fans. They're good about promoting their product. They're good about their sponsors getting return on investment. And that's what we want to be for Dirt Crowd. We want all of our fans to be able to help feel like 10 years from now, man, Garrett Benson, Aiden Parrish, Sean Mahaffey, I can remember they were that young. And yeah. I can remember when, you know, I was a member of Dirt Crowd, and for $25 a month I got an exclusive T-shirt and maybe a signed visor or a pair of gloves. And right. Again, you feel like you have some skin in the game. I, I'm helping them along the way. Right, so, helping them bridge the gap and, and kind of teaching them along the way too. As, as the gra as the grassroots, um, the younger the kids are, they're not they're not so knowledgeable. Mom and dad may not know as much, and kind of you and your team are, are building something um, to kind of help them find their path and fine tune things yep. um, along the way. Dirtcrowd.com. What 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 brought about the name? I mean, is it just... Because uh, it's basically crowdfunding, and we love dirt racing. So it was kind of a... a hand in hand. I don't know if you've ever tried to go uh, uh, sign on and, and, and try to find a name that has not taken a <laughs> domain name, but it is tough. But uh, there's been many a night I was prior to, you know, coming up with Dirt Crowd where we're setting up, and I would wake up and try two or three names, and it's taken, it's taken, it's taken. But I think Dirt Crowd just resonates. It's what we are. We're crowdfunding. Uh, we, we all don't have a lot of money to give, but we can all give a little, and that creates a lot for these drivers. And so, to me, that was an, it was an easy name. It just made sense, and, 
And uh, again, uh, you know, it's a family. We're a crowd, and and here we are to support our dirt drivers. So, so dirtcrowd.com isn't something that was just thought up last week. <laughs> no, this is no, something that you've been. Oh, I've. Uh, well, I can tell you, right, my wife and my friends, I've wore them out. You know, I'll uh, have a, a a bright idea pop off, and I'm calling, or whether it be you or whoever. Hey, hey, what about this? Could we do this? You know, does this right. make sense to you? Uh, I'm one of those people that uh, I'm not really. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm either all in. Or I'm out. You know, right. I, I don't do anything half throttle. Uh, if I'm in, I'm in. Uh, you know, we're ride or die. Yeah. So um, it's been something that you know, and and I feel like we're promoting a product, and 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 we want to partner with these drivers. So I want it to be something that they're proud of, something that we're proud of. You know, I've been on the other side where we were doing a little bit of sponsor stuff, uh, sponsorship stuff with a company, and you know, we tried to set up a deal, and and uh, the deal goes through, but once the contracts are signed and everything's done. That driver's already moved on. Well, I had a connection with that driver. And this is a way that, you know, if, if I'm a dirt crowd driver and I've got 30 subscribers mm-hmm. um, at each level, those subscribers are going to follow me. Whether I get kicked out of a ride or whether I, you know, if I'm driving midgets and then I go to a different owner on the sprint car team or whatever the case may be, they're loyal to the driver. And, you know, that's the thing I like. It, it, you know, they can promote it themselves. We can uh, cross-pollinate, you know, if, if Rico posts and, you know, all of a sudden that drives more traffic to Dirt Crowd and, and that dwindles down and they see a Kaylee Mahaffey or, mm-hmm. you know, they see somebody else, that's when you can make that connection. You know, it's not just about seeing them at the hometown track. Right. You know, we have those connections with those guys and we've been fortunate where we live to have that. But, you know, I've got friends in Cali now that are racing, you know, Colby Copeland and, you know, he'll tell me about some young and up and comers and, and we're so blessed now to have all the streaming service that I can actually put watch, eyes on yeah. him and watch him and say, yeah, I do like him and I like how he carries himself. I, I like that when he rolls into the pit area, his stuff's always clean, you know. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things I think uh, the younger generation and the younger kids need to learn. It's not just about your results on Saturday night. There's so much that goes into that and leads up to it that, um, you know, I think there's a lot of life lessons in racing. And, and, and in saying that, I think Dirt Crowd can help bridge the gap a little bit in that as well as, you know, here's how you need to approach sponsors. Here's what you need to do to, to broaden your reach. And that's what we're trying to do, whether it be, you know, it's not just about your bio and not just about you can get subscription and money from memberships. It's about learning how to handle the process of wanting to be a race car driver and possibly own your own race team. I mean, you want a polished product. You know, you see Keith that was in the midget area, and now he comes down to the micro area, and it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. The quicker you can get your hands on the quality kids or the ones that have what you think is the ability, the better off you can make them long term. So us being involved in the micro world, if, if you can polish that child where he's, hey, he's good in front of the camera, he knows how to talk to sponsors, he's good at promoting his brand, you know, he talks about his race results, um, he shows you where you can get your merchandise. Those are all things that build up to, they're all having to do now at the outlaw mm-hmm. level. And they didn't have that uh, a dirt crowd right. to say, hey, here's kind of the blueprint. Here's what you need to follow. We want to assist you in doing that. And for me, that's that's the big give back. That To me, that's what at night when I say, yeah, we want it to be successful for many reasons. But a lot of it is to think if we could have had something like this when it was Brady and when it was Shane and when it was Darren, mm-hmm. you know, you've already moved along. And a lot of those guys do bring back a lot of knowledge. I mean, having Shane here and me being able to bounce ideas of, about Dirk Crowd off of Shane, you know, those are all things that he's lived through. Those are processes he's went through. Right. And if the earlier we can learn that, the better off we're all going to be. So we're super excited about it. Sounds awesome to me. I can't wait for it to launch and just just to see it grow and, and see it move forward. Um, aside from everything else, racing, like some rapid fire questions. Are you like a guy that likes a big, big track or like a bull ring? I like cowboy up bull ring. Uh, I really do. I, don't get me wrong. I, I love the big track stuff, but you start hearing a little bit more now about dirty air and stuff like that, you know, and it's all about motor. To me, to me, I like watching a driver. I like being in the infield at Peavely and watching him work the car and, you know, got to get elbows up. That and place is so amazing. I love it. Gosh, I love it. And it's, it's, a, lot, so and it's a lot like port. That's why I yeah. think port translates so well. You, if you're good at port, you can be good anywhere in the country. And I think when you're good at port, that means, you know, you're in tight quarters. You're driving against quality drives. I mean, you, you look at the, the car count here and the quality of cars that are here. It's amazing, it's and, I, and I think it's it's a b- great breeding ground for the kids to get experience and, and learn to, to be competitive and drive, because if you're fast here, you're fast anywhere. 
Has there ever been a want from you to be that driver, to be a driver, or have you, have you always been more so like? Not, not really. I, I, I was. Uh, I would have had to have been a late bloomer um, as a racer. Uh, don't get me wrong. I would love to. I would love to think I would like to hop into a sprint car or midget and and uh, idle around about thirty miles an hour and think I'm going 150, <laughs> 10 uh, slide chain. But no. Uh, not really. I mean, if I had to go all the way back and I could redo it, yeah, because it's how much I love the sport. But in saying that, I kind of know what my role is now and what I can bring and what I can provide. And I love being a fan and being able to watch racing four nights a week, you know, with the streaming surface, uh, services. And and uh, I know now just uh, being a little bit longer in the tooth, um, you know, you've seen a lot and you've seen a lot of guys come up and, hey, if we could have done this back then or they could have known this or – you know, uh, to me, that means a lot. And I, th I feel like that's what we can give now, you know, uh, not only support, but um, whether it be financially or emotionally or whatever, I, I think anything we can do to help um, the younger generation, especially on the tracks, fantastic. So Janky Bobby stole your piece of advice that you would give that, you know, <laughs> nobody did. would he ever, did. nobody, you, you never know who's watching. You never he know did. who's going to come walking through your pit area. Um, you've seen a lot of different drivers come. You've seen some drivers go away and then come back and you've seen, um, sponsors come and go, and you've seen fans come and go. You've yep. been around it a long time, um, involved in what I would consider, um, you know, the, the racing capital secondary to, to Indy. Tulsa has a lot to offer and has a they lot do. going on. They do. Um, so without giving the same piece of advice to close out the show here, what piece of advice, what lesson would you kind of prep people for? Whether it be driver, fan, sponsor, I think it's the um, – overall, I would say it's the amount of passion the fans have in the sport. And, and, I, and when, I, when I say fans, I mean, I, that includes drivers. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of drivers. I'll text at night, and, you know, we'll talk about watching so-and-so in a non-wing sprint car, a USAC, maybe an outlaw driver I'm talking to. Um, we're all fans of the sport, uh, and we all want to see it grow. Um, and, and to me, the best, the best piece of advice you could give is, you know, you, you're going to learn that, we're all going to have ups and downs. We're all going to have tough periods of time. But the better you can treat people, and there's people watching no matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if we're in turn five or if we're in the pit area and I'm helping push off a car or whatever it is. People are always watching, and, and what you can do and what you, how you handle yourself, um, I know is being on the other side of wanting to, to write a check for somebody, that means a lot. They're representing your company. Mm -hmm. um, I'm partnering with them. I, I think the word sponsor is gone. Yeah. Uh, we're partners now, um, and that's how I look at it. And uh, I think that's the most important thing for everybody to realize that we're all one giant family. Everybody's trying to go towards the same goal. And uh, hopefully with Dirt Crowd, we can push that and make that an easier um, bridge to gap for everybody. And, and everybody has fun. We have skin in the game. Dirt Crowd, we have a lot of things we really want to do. I've got grand aspirations for Dirt Crowd as far as, helping drivers and, and have giveaways for drivers. You know, on the other side, we're doing that for fans, but I want to do it where, you know, drivers may, this month it may be a fire suit we're giving away. This next month it may be a helmet. It may be a ride in a, a midget. It may be a, wide, a ride in a micro. Um, anything that we can do to help promote is what we're all about. That's what we want to do because we are a family. I mean, at the end of the day, we all want to help out, uh, whether we're announcers or whether we're fans or sponsors or drivers or a car owner track owner even we're all here for the same common goal and that is to it's for dirt racing in general and and it's a love and a passion we all have and and i've got the bug and i'll have it the rest of my life so there that's just go. the way it is race fans keep the passion keep that fire deep down inside and hey check out dirtcrowd.com to help your favorite race car driver thanks Hoss. appreciate it man. Performance Electronics, custom electronic solutions. From design to manufacturing, let us put your ideas in motion and become your company's full-service electronics manufacturing experts. Performance Electronics.